Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. This is hopefully the last video in this series I've been doing of kind of unboxings and talking through recent spending that I've made because I'm really, really, really hoping that I've not been as frivolous as I have been in the lead up to making these videos. I'm usually a very, very sensible spender and I don't buy anything unless I feel like I'm going to use it, like I need it. I'm trying to be more minimalist and it's just not been happening recently. Today's video is the most expensive thing that I've bought recently for a single item and I'm still undecided whether or not this was a good idea, whether I had genuine reasons for purchasing this or whether my emotions took over me. You can help me decide. This is Bankroll Coffee. Bankroll Coffee is the latest venture by the YouTuber Graham Stephan. I really, really enjoy his channels. He does a lot of financial content and that's something that really inspires me and helps me to kind of keep on track with my budgets and stuff like that when it feels like I just want to spend and I just want to give it all in because I'm never going to get to where I want to be. It just really keeps me on track because I feel like there's so many people out there who are making videos about like hauls and the things that they're going to buy and how nice their home is with all these different decorations and things like that and the home is nice and those things do make them happy but I feel a lot of pressure to kind of live up to that goal when I watch that kind of content. When I watch Graham Stephan's content I feel like I need to throw everything away, I need to get like a second job, I need to go and get all these affiliate links and stuff like that. He really inspires me to kind of create more money and to use my time more wisely to get up in the morning instead of sleeping in and make use of those extra hours and stuff like that so I really really enjoy his content. I don't watch Graham Stephan's main channel very often because it's very US centric and a lot of the advice he gives is for US residents which I am not, I'm a UK resident. But I do really enjoy watching the Graham Stephan show where he kind of reacts to financial content and it's a lot more laid back, less formal. It's still the financial advice that you enjoy and the financial sense that you want to receive. It's more in a laid back context, it's more it's more fun ultimately. And then my absolute favourite is the Ice Coffee Hour podcast where he sits down with his assistant Jack and a guest and they speak finances, they speak YouTube content creation and they just speak about life as well. The reason I really like that is I'm kind of like the Jack to another creator. I don't see her in person but if we did see each other in person then we would have a very similar re relationship to Jack and Graham I believe. So that's just really nice to see and I do really enjoy that channel and the variety that it brings. Bankroll Coffee as you can probably guess is a coffee venture. It kind of started out as a joke on Graham Stephan's channel which grew and grew and grew until eventually Graham Stephan was the guy with the 20 cent size coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker myself and I'm not in the US so this probably sounds like a very strange purchase for me to buy something from Bankroll Coffee. They only ship in the US at the moment and it's fresh coffee so it's not really something even if I was a coffee drinker this would be a, a good idea to ship to the UK. I've never tried to ship coffee to the UK but I don't think it would be as fresh. I don't know if it would even be usable by the time it's been in transit for so long like maybe it would? I really don't know. It's not something I've ever looked into because I am not a coffee drinker. I signed up to Bankroll Coffee's mailing list. More out of curiosity than anything, I wanted to kind of remind myself to go and have a look at the website upon launch, see what they were doing, see what kind of prices there were and stuff like that, just to kind of check it out. But then I saw that Graham was also going to be signing 69 signed Bankroll Coffee mugs, and I thought that was just a really fun concept as well. As somebody who isn't able to support the channel with like links and things like that, like going to public, I mean I could sign up for like a YouTube membership but that's not really something that I want to do. I wanted to kind of support Graham in as tangible, affordable way to myself and I decided to buy one of these signed Bankroll coffee mugs. $69.69 is a really really high price for a coffee mug but I really felt like it was supporting Graham Stephan, it was supporting his new venture, it was just really something that I wanted to do even though I don't drink coffee and probably aren't going to use this mug. I just wanted to be there at the beginning and just be part of something and say hey I like this idea, I don't like coffee, but I like you, I like your company, I want you to do well. So that's basically what this purchase was. When I got the link to order before anybody else, I went onto the website, I saw the price was $69.69 and that felt awfully expensive to me. So I exited out 
And then I actually went back in again because I thought, no, I want to support the channel. I don't necessarily want a mug, but I do want to support the venture. I went back in, I put in all my details. It told me that they could only ship to the US. Then I exited out again. I decided, oh, well, that's the end of that. And then I thought, no, you know what? It is worth sending it to my US forwarding address and spending a fortune getting it to the UK. It's going to be a nice little token that I was there on day one, that I was one of the first orders, that I have this item that's no longer going to be available. I just thought it would be really nice. So there we go. Um, I've spent way too long trying to justify this purchase because it does sound kind of insane. If you want to comment down below, do you think this is insane? Do you think any of this logic makes sense? I would be really interested to hear. Let's go to the unboxing. My mug cost me $69.69 and since the order was over $30, shipping within the US was free. This converted to £49.41. The mug was sent to a mail forwarding company and I paid them for the onward transit to my home in the UK. This included postage costs, tax and handling fees. In total this came to $73.67. With a coupon code I managed to get the cost down to $69.02 which was still a lot more than I hoped to pay but at least now the shipping was less than the item itself. This converted to £49.69. Altogether the order cost me $138.71 or £99.10. I had hoped to keep the total cost to under $100 but I knew without getting a quote first that there was a chance it could be higher. I suppose under £100 is the next best thing. Hi everyone! It's June 27th and I wanted to turn the camera on to give you a little update on what's happening. My order has been received in the US at the US address and it's being forwarded to me at the moment and I'm still waiting on it. But the reason that I wanted to turn the camera on is because I feel like I'm going to get a question about why I paid so much for shipping, why I paid so much for this item, why didn't I contact the company, why didn't I try and figure something out and I want to answer those questions and kind of preemptively tell you what was happening. I also wanted to say that this order hasn't been perfect and that's completely understandable. This is a brand new company. I ordered on the first day, they were still finding their feet and that's all completely understandable. I don't really hold any of this against them. It's only really minor things that went wrong and it's not left a bad taste in my mouth. I'm not telling people not to go to this company, buy a beware or anything like that. There's been a lot of happy customers and I'm sure I will be as well once my package is received. I've kept a timeline of everything that's happened so far, so you can kind of understand what I mean when I say that everything wasn't perfect, but at the same time these are relatively minor moans and I do understand that. I maybe I'm being a bit of a Karen including this, but this was part of the experience and I feel like that should be taken into account as part of the review of the product. On the 14th of June at 4.53pm I received the VIP early access email and by 5.03pm my order for a signed Bankroll coffee mug was confirmed so that was like 10 minutes later that I'd managed to do that and this was with all the toing and froing of deciding whether I was going to order so that was a really fast order, I put that in really quickly and then at 5.09pm I sent an email to the customer service people asking if there was any way that my address could be changed to the UK. Side note here, I have looked it up and apparently sending fresh coffee in the mail is a bit of a pain in the bum, especially if you're trying to do it internationally. I don't know if it's possible if there's a certain courier service that will allow you to do it, but certainly when you go to mail it, it really narrows down the options of how you can send it because it's considered a perishable item. What's really pushed me to send this email is the idea that Graham Stephan is the face of this company and he believes in saving money, spending it wisely and getting the best deal. And I knew that the best deal for me would be to send it from the US to the UK directly. I didn't mind paying a little bit extra, I didn't mind organising the taxes myself, all of that. And I sent the email away to the customer service team, knowing that maybe wasn't going to be possible, but I just wanted to try. I haven't received a answer to that email. Whether they got inundated, whether somebody looked at it and didn't know how to respond, I don't know. Ultimately it did end up going to my US address. Two days later on the 16th of June I started receiving emails to say that my product had been shipped. 
date. At 7.33pm my time, I received my first shipping email from Bankroll Coffee. And then at 10.38pm, I received a second shipping email from the shipping company themselves with more details on where it was going to. When I looked at the tracking details, it said that a label had been printed and that USPS were still waiting on it arriving with them. This is not at all personal to Bankroll Coffee, but it really, really annoys me when I order something. And I guess the thing to say that the item has been shipped and it's actually just kind of still waiting in a warehouse with the label on it. You've not sent it anywhere. It's not shipped. It's just sitting in a warehouse with the label on it and you're kind of procrastinating is the way I see that. Again, that's just a minor irritation I have with shipping in general. Not at all personal to Bankroll Coffee. I don't know how systems work behind the scenes. It's just kind of annoying as a customer to be told something is shipped and this didn't actually ship until the week after, but we'll get to that later. On the 17th of June at 9.35pm, I'd received an email from Bankroll Coffee telling me that they'd done so well on the opening week that they were actually running a week behind with coffee orders and they were roasting 24 hours a day just to try and get the orders out. It's wonderful that they were doing so well. I was genuinely so happy for them that their opening week had went so well. As far as I was concerned, I read this email and didn't think it would be affecting my order. Firstly, because I'd put it in so early that I wasn't sure that a week's delay was going to affect it. Secondly, it was a mug, not a coffee, so waiting on it roasting wasn't going to be an issue. And thirdly, I'd been told that it had already been shipped, so as far as I was concerned, it was about to leave the warehouse. On the 22nd of June, my item was finally passed to USPS, which was six days after I'd been told it was shipped. I don't know what was happening in the warehouse while this delay with the coffee was going on, whether the warehouse workers were sent to help in some capacity, I don't know, that's all completely understandable, this is a brand new company, they're still figuring out the demands, the procedures, etc etc, so it's not like I'm holding against them that it was late, it's just something I wanted to note that I thought this was coming a whole six days before it actually went anywhere. On the 24th of June, 10 days after I ordered, I received my order at my US address and I am so, so excited to see it when it finally gets to me. I understand I've been a little bit critical, I've had a few moans in this part of the video, but ultimately I'm still excited and I want to say again, don't anybody take this as a reason not to order from them. Don't consider this a buyer beware. If you want to order from them, go for it, because I do think this is a great company. And these are some learning curves that they're going to go through, but ultimately I think they're going to get there and they're going to be a great company. Hi everyone, it's July 6th. My package arrived yesterday and I'm excited to see what's in it and see what's inside, see what number mug I have as well. I am genuinely still excited for this, even though I had a little bit of a moan earlier in the video. I hope you can understand where I'm coming from with that moan. It wasn't me trying to pick apart the company, although when I look back it does kind of look like I'm trying to pick apart the company and just attack everything that went wrong. It's not that at all, I just wanted to review everything fairly since there's moments in this video where I'm excited and there's moments in the video where I haven't really been so excited and I wanted to show the process of that so anyways I have it here let's get it open right so I'm gonna need scissors for this because there's quite a bit of paperwork that's sitting on top of the box I think that's going to be about it coming into the country as opposed to anything else I don't think anybody else will have this part yes that was um, an invoice from FedEx so I don't need that. The big question is, that I'm wondering about is which number mug did I get? I feel like that's the thing that everybody's wondering when they've ordered the signed mug. I know that I've not got number one because somebody on Discord had number one and they've shown a photo and things like that. I quite like the number nine and I like multiples of nine so I wonder... I, I I don't want to like pin my hopes on a certain number, but if it's a multiple of nine, I know it sounds silly, but it is just something I like. So if it was a multiple of nine, I would be over the moon, but I know that's asking a bit much just to expect a certain number or a certain multiple of a number. Ultimately, when it comes to like the number, the specific number, unless it's like number one or number 69, I feel like it doesn't really matter. I feel like it's like even the number one and number 69 I mean there's a novelty to them but ultimately I don't think it really changes the value first thing when I opened the box was a packing slip so I'm just going to put that to the side the next thing that's in the box is a bankroll coffee postcard let me show you this 
Thank you for joining me for a cup of Bankroll coffee. I've been working hard to find the perfect cup of coffee that serves up all the flavour without breaking the bank, and this is the result. Enjoy the coffee and enjoy the savings. Graham Stefan, and then the Instagram for Bankroll coffee. That was a cute little postcard to put in the box there. I didn't really expect that, but it's nice that it's in there. It's nice to have a little extra in the box. I, I really like that, so I'll put that aside. The next thing I can see is a ton of packing peanuts. I love these. So I can use them for future things that I sell. And then here is the mug. It was just kind of wrapped in a bit of cellophane. Lovely, that's the signature on it there. Fantastic, and it's number 49. Lovely, number 49. That's a really nice sized mug as well, I have to say. I don't really plan on using it because I don't I don't drink coffee. But if I did need like a nice sturdy mug and I didn't mind using this, then that's that's a really good mug. If you're thinking of getting one of the regular ones, then that feels like a nice a nice good coffee mug. As I was saying earlier, I like multiples of nine, but I'm not particularly irritated that it's not a multiple of nine. There is a couple of nines in there, you know, 49 out of 69. It's really a testimony to how fast they were selling out that I bought that like 10 minutes after I got the email to say that they were in stock and that's number 49. So they went really, really quickly. I think that really says how many people had a demand for that before the, the coffee even went properly on sale, that that was number 49. There was only another 20 to go before they sold out when I ordered that. So there we go. I don't know if they did package them up in the order that they received the orders. Um, if they did, then certainly that makes sense. If it was just like randomly selected, then there we go. But I, I don't mind that. I'm, I, I know I said I like multiples of nine, but I'm not going to be going, it wasn't a number nine, because that's not something you can guarantee. That's not something that was ever promised to me. So there we go. I'm going through a layer of packing peanuts now to get the signed photo. Carefully wrapped in bubble wrap again. That's a nice sensible size of picture, I think. You don't have something that's too big to go on a wall or anything, and it's not too small that you feel like, why did you even send this? I was thinking it would be funny if somebody kind of put these up like with like family photos and stuff like that, and then if someone said, you know, who is this person? You just make up a story every time about who this family member is and why they've decided to sign coffee mugs and take photos of them. Um, so yes, that, that's really good there. I'm not expecting anything else in the box, but I'm just going to have a hunt around just in case there's anything. I don't see anything else in the box. That's all I have left there, which is fine. I wasn't expecting anything else, but sometimes it's just fun to kind of hunt around and see if there's anything else in there. Final thoughts on this. Just call me Alana Smorissette because this is an ironic purchase. I can I cannot believe how much money I've spent on an item from a person who believes in spending sensibly. When it really boils down to it, the physical item that I paid for was a mug with some pen marks on it and a picture of the person who put the pen marks on it, which is a really weird thing to buy. Ultimately, this purchase was never about the physical product though, and I think that's true for everybody who ordered it. It was ultimately about this guy and about supporting a new venture, supporting his channel, his community. That's what pretty much what it was about. And I am so proud to be a part of this day one story of Bankroll Coffee, and I have definitely got over a hundred pounds worth of content from his channels over the years. So. A hundred pounds on this. It does seem excessive, but ultimately I could have spent a hundred pounds in worse ways. I don't love how much I paid in shipping fees to get this here as an international buyer, but ultimately that was a lesson learned. I made that decision as an international buyer, and maybe next time I should do my research into how much it's going to cost to get it to me before I decide to buy. Thank you so much for watching everybody. It would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this video and maybe leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think of this purchase. Would you have bought this? Do you think this made sense? Do you find the irony in all of this hilarious or just incredibly tragic? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Whether it's about that or something else, let's continue the conversation. And thank you so, so much for watching everybody. Cheerio! For those of you who watch Graham Stephan's channel, you'll maybe know that he uses kind of towels and things on lights in order to make videos instead of just just buying a fancy light. 
And it's kind of became a joke of the channel recently, especially as like his assistant Jack is really wanting to like upgrade their equipment. Um, right now I have my tripod resting on a shoebox and this tripod, it has a very loose head. So if I have it at not quite the right angle, it will suddenly have like a really good view of the ceiling and not a very good view of me. So I'm trying to balance this quite right. It's just unbalanced itself because I hit it and it just really captures the spirit of this video that this is the one where it decided to go a bit funny. Is it back now? I think it's back. Okay.